Hello again. So after our uh, 60 second algo the other day, um, a lot of people asked, can we trade more than just buy? How easy is it to trade extra symbols? Well, the way the system works is it will run the script for every single symbol in the US equities. And when it calls through, is symbol qualified? If it returns a true here, it will keep the script running. If it returns a false, it will shut the script down. So in this case, we put symbol equals spy. So the only one that was left through was spy. So all you have to do is let us true through for any other symbols that you're interested in. So a very simple way of doing that is, I'm just gonna pull something off my uh, notepad here, is to change the line to something like this, where you return symbol in and then a list of symbols. So is the symbol, and that's being passed here to us, is symbol in this list of symbols. Is it SPY or XLY or XLF or XLK and so on and so forth. So these are the sector symbols. They basically give you the opportunity to trade individual sections of the US equities market. But still as a group, you're not trading a single symbol. They're bunched together under healthcare, for example, or energy or utilities or technology or real estate. So it gives you the opportunity that you might write a model that trades SPY, um, but certain sections of SPY may be going down when other sections are going up. So by breaking the pie up into different segments, you get the opportunity to trade them individually, but you're still trading quite a large block of symbols. So in this case, we're trading the 10 sectors and also trading SPY. But what if you wanted to trade even more symbols than this? What if you wanted to trade a block of symbols? Um, well, you can change this to as long as you want, but it's not going to change on a daily basis. If you wanted something that changes on a daily basis, there are a number of ways of doing it. But the simplest way is we maintain a set of lists. So I mentioned earlier the S&P 500, the Standard & Poor 500, 500 symbols that represent uh, the, the main movers and shakers on the stock exchange. Those 500 aren't always the same. Some symbols drop out of favor, some symbols come into favor. So the 500 symbols on the 1st of January 2017 were not the same as the 500 symbols on the 1st of January 2016 or the 2nd of January 2016 for all we know. So what we need to do is have a stored set of lists for each day and pull that list out for each day. Now we have that built into the system. So we're going to go to the documentation. Now I keep two tabs open in my browser, one for my script that I'm editing and one for the documentation. We're going to look under reference and we're going to look under lists. Now, if you weren't sure where to find it, you could always search and just look for lists. And the one we're interested in is an index. So let's click on index here. And here you can see we've got a number of indexes, indices. We've got the Dow 30, the mid cap, the Russell 3000, and the standard and poor 100, 400, 500, and 600. We're interested in the S&P 500. So this is a unique identifier that represents that list. So let's take that and we'll go back to our script. And we're just going to pop it on a random line for now. Now, in order to turn this um, string of characters into a list of symbols and return as a value that we need, there are a couple of calls we need to make to the system. I can go through the documentation and show you where it is. It's uh, under cloud quant, under symbol list, they're called get handle and in list. But to be honest, the documentation under here for these functions isn't that clear. And the only time you will ever use it is in in symbol qualified and will be in the format that I'm about to show you. So what I would suggest you do is you just grab this from one of the demonstration scripts, from one of the public scripts up here, copy it, and then change this unique string to suit your need, okay? So in this case, I've, I've pulled off my uh, document, the line that I need, and we'll talk through what it's doing. So we're saying a variable S&P 500 equals, and you can see here's our unique list identifier for the S&P 500. And the first thing we're doing is with service dot symbol list get handle. And it's just basically returning a, another list for this list. So this is a list that points to a list that varies over time. Don't really need to worry about that, gets another list. And then it's doing another service call to symbol list in list. So what this call does, this service symbol list in list, is it takes two values, two lists, list comma list. And it looks to see if something in this list is in this list. In this case, all we're going to pass to it is a single symbol. And here we're going to pass to it this big long convolute command that goes looking for the up-to-date list for today. So we end up with this line, S&P 500 or S&P 500 equals 
uh, list in list, this list, this symbol. And this will be a 1 if the symbol is in the S&P 500 this day, and it will be a 0 if the symbol is not in the S&P 500 this day. And that's all you need to know. And um, we can get rid of this line that we added in. We will keep our symbol equals SPY, and we'll say or SP500. So we're saying, when you come through here, if you check to see if the symbol is in the S&P 500, and if it's set to 1, then you will leave it running. If it's set to 0, you will stop it running, unless it's SPY, in which case you will leave it running. And that's all there is to it. That is now going to run for all of those symbols. So let's click Save. And so we'll click on New Test, and we're going to go 1.3 to 6.30. We're going to set the custom time to 9.10 in the morning to 4.20. We're not going to run as a single multi-tier job. We're going to run in parallel as many of them as we can. And we will click Submit and jump to the results page. And I'll pause the video there and come back once the uh, back tests are complete. Okay, so the back test is completed, and we can see that we made $1.7 million, which is not a bad looking back test, but it's net edge per share, per share traded is one cent. We can click on show more to get a little more detail. We can see there is actually 1.4 cents per share traded. So not great, um, sharp ratio is not great. Um, it's max drawdown isn't too bad. Um, this gives us all the data to, to make a judgment call as to whether or not the model is good. But as we know, the first six months of 2017, the market was moving up constantly. So it's not surprising to see a model that just goes long with the market, uh, goes long and the market's going up, it's going to be profitable. Um, you're going to want to make a model that's balanced long and short. But we can sort it by profit per day. We've got a fairly big negative day here of a uh, down $736,000 and our biggest positive day was up $380,000 and we can see that roughly double the height on this one particular day. And if I recall rightly this was the day that the health bill failed and the market dropped so not surprising if you look at the stocks on that particular day they dropped quite dramatically. But well, that's all there is for this video. Um, check back again and we'll be doing more videos on a weekly basis. Thanks a lot.